Hey everyone, it's Erica with Mappy Hour in Chicago. Super excited to have you virtually with us today. Unfortunately, uh, we are still having some virtual sessions um, here in Chicago until COVID pans out a bit more and the summer weather comes by in the spring too. Um, so we're excited to have you at least live streaming with us today. Um, quick couple of things before we bring on David. Uh, just wanted to shout out Arcteryx today, our sponsor. Uh, super excited to be partnering with them here in Chicago and our other chapters, as well as uh, Sierra Nevada, who's hooking us up with some beer today. Um, did want to mention a little bit about Mappy Hour for those who maybe have not been to an event before or still new to our chapter. Um, here in Chicago, we have around 300 plus members. We've been around for a couple of years and Mappy Hour is in many cities across the US. We're in um, Denver and Seattle, Northwest Arkansas, um, some Ohio representatives. So whether you're tuning in from Chicago or elsewhere, um, definitely check out mappyhour.org to see if there's a chapter near you um, or even visiting a, a chapter if there's an event in a city that you're traveling to this summer um, or in the fall. Um, we are a group that is dedicated to bringing outdoorsy people and who live in urban cities together to explore um, the green spaces that are in our, our cities. Um, and Chicago is certainly a place that has lots of that. Um, so we're excited to bring on David today to talk to us about a winter sport, um, ice climbing, and how he has gotten into the sport, um, some of his fa favorite places to climb in the Midwest, and um, a little bit about how you can get in the sport too if you've never done it before. Um, real quick before we bring him on, just want to pop Ashley on here to talk a little bit about a giveaway we're doing with Arcteryx um, that you can stick around till the end to see if you win. Hey, Ashley. Hi there. Um, so my name is Ashley from Arcteryx Chicago, and we're really excited to give away a raffle prize of a covert sweater courtesy of Arcteryx Chicago from our new Rush Street location um, right in the Gold Coast. So if you want to put in the comment and leave um, a winter activity memory that you have, and we will choose a random comment to win a complimentary covert sweater from Arcteryx. Cool. Uh, just a reminder for people who are tuning on on Facebook or YouTube to head to mappyhour.org. Um, log in there, and that's where you can comment and ask questions of David today and also participate in that raffle. So thanks so much, Ashley. Thanks. Cool. So without further ado, here's David. Excited to have you with us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, that covert sweater that Ashley's giving away is super comfy. So make sure you get on the <laughs> website and make some comments. That's awesome. Um, Super excited that they're willing to give that away today. Um, cool. So let me pull up your presentation. I know we've got a lot to cover today, um, but I wanted you to, to just introduce yourself first um, and maybe talk a little bit about what we're we're going to hear from you today, as well as who you are and what you do. Totally, totally. But uh, but for, but first, if we're talking ice climbing, you know, I, I got I got to get get prepared here, <laughs> you know, because you know how. These cold weather climates, you know, but no, I can't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really, really stoked to have this. Uh, again, my name is Dave Harden. So um, got into ice climbing five or six years ago and loved it. Everything about it, the community, the climbing, the adventure. It, it was just so much fun to where this is a trip I run every single year. And as long as it's uh, available for me, the rest of my life, every single year, I'm going to keep doing this trip. Uh, mm -hmm. What's cool about this year is, so we missed it last year because of the pandemic. This is my largest group. We got 20 of us going when normally we have like eight to 10. So mm -hmm. And uh, you're I, talking specifically about you do a, you lead this trip to, to the Michigan Ice Climbing Fest yes, every year. Yes, correct. Correct. Got it. So, um, but I am uh, a longtime Arcteryx ambassador. Uh, what that means is I am, you know, presenting events and, and bringing the community involved with outdoor activities, especially here in Chicago. Um, one of my first presentations with Arcteryx was a little preachy, but it was like, hey, just because you live in Chicago in the wintertime doesn't mean you can't do stuff outdoors. And so uh, here we are. Awesome. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, I'm inside probably honestly wearing a parka like you are these days. It's so cold here, but um, there's certainly so much to do in the winter here. Um, Cool. Anything you want to talk about on these slides? Like what, what yeah. is all this? <laughs> yeah, just a little, little background. Um, mainly I'm a surfer. Um, 
I travel all over the place to surf, uh, but the upper left-hand corner, I surf Lake Michigan here, and usually it's in the wintertime, and so uh, I, ha- I didn't share any pictures, but I have pictures like icicles hanging in front of beer. Again, mm. we talk about just because it's cold doesn't mean you can't do anything, uh, but the ice climbing, and you know, I got 20 years in the fitness industry. Uh, for example, I used to train a lot of celebrities, and I have the super troopers there. I mm. worked with them when I was working at Brooklyn Boulders, and so just a lot of fun and uh making sure that hey yeah life can be serious you got to do all your work and everything else but make sure you have fun with it as well that's awesome we actually interviewed two surf sisters from empire michigan um, ella and annabelle and that was a really awesome chat that i had with them which is in our history of mappy hour chicago um events so on there that if anyone's interested in learning more about specifically surfing the great lakes we've got a cool session on that so that's really really awesome. Um, And this is me. Thanks for the slide. Uh, Good to meet you all. So let's dive into it. Um, You know, how, how do you get into ice climbing? How does one be like, I'm just gonna go climb up this ice waterfall? Like, that's pretty, pretty rad. Totally, totally. Um, First off, you know, the festivals, here's a list of all the festivals that pretty much around there's some smaller ones, these like the main ones. It makes all the difference in the world. Erica, you went to one just to observe a couple of years ago and you can see how welcoming everybody is. Um, super open to whether you're beginners, whether you're a rock climber or not a climber at all. You go to these festivals and they do a great job presenting it to you. They have intro classes. Uh, they provide transportation out to the climbs for you. There's workshops and clinics and everything else. And so first and foremost, if you have any interest in ice climbing, besides obviously attending this uh, session right here, get yourself to one of these festivals. It'll change your world. That's great. I didn't even know there was all of these. Um, It's awesome. It's my goal to get to all of them. And then, sorry. And then this slide here, it's the next piece, find like-minded people, find others who want to climb. So uh, I, I am, I love introducing newbies to ice climbing. So I've introduced over 100 people to ice climbing for the first time, 100 newbies, as I I call them. Um, So find yourself, find other people like like myself or like groups like our group that are going there and be like, hey, you know, I want to go. Because I could tell you most people who go, they want to return. But every year, at least 50 percent of my group are newbies because Mm. they're seeing how much fun we're having. They're seeing everything we're doing. So go ahead and find yourself other people that have an interest in, in doing it. And if you want to go to the next slide where you could find some of these people here's some local places right you got the climbing gyms there but also our tarix we have a community in chicago as well so just find like-minded people and start sharing with them and and maybe you find somebody at brooklyn bowlers or a group of brooklyn bowlers that have never done it but they're like yeah i'm adventurous i want to try it yeah that's actually i had mentioned like or you had mentioned that i've been to the festival before and that's when i went up to the michigan ice climbing festival i was mostly just curious to see people doing amazing things like ice climb. Um, But I thought it was really cool there how uh, it seemed, you know, other than driving eight hours from Chicago to get up there, once you're there and they have so much programming to kind of teach you literally the ropes of how to do it and the equipment and everything. So um, not only finding people to go with you, but even just like making that journey up there and just observing maybe is a good place to start too. Totally. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about it later on in the presentation, but um, making sure that it's something you want to get into as well. So I it's yeah. 100% support. And if you want to do that, Erica, you could speak to it. But even just going there and not even climbing, it's still a blast. It's mm. still so much fun. Oh, and yeah. There's a lot of things to do besides climbing. Uh, and then the last piece here, also, there's organizations, right? If I'm saying go find like-minded individuals, go find people that are adventurous and they're climbers and they're doing stuff. Here's some other organizations you could go ahead and contact. They've got different events. They've got uh, newsletters that go out. And so um, that's the first thing that you want to do. And, and what I will finish this section off with is you don't have to be intimidated with ice climbing. A lot of people, they see ice climbing and they're like, whoa, oh my gosh, that, that's too much. Um, it's extremely beginner friendly. Yes, there's advanced climbing. Yes, there's things that you could do that that's dangerous, that that's challenging, but you... For, for, for instance, I have two of my crew, they're my surfing buddies. One is 54, 55 years old, one is 62 years old. No climbing experience whatsoever. 
And this will be their third year because they have so much fun and being able to teach them like, hey, you could do some basic stuff and still enjoy yourself. So yeah. if you are intimidated, don't be intimidated. Try it out. Doesn't matter what level you're at. Cool. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, what about ice climbing in the Midwest specifically? Like, um, you know, is it different than the other climbing you've seen out in other areas mm -hmm. of the country? Mm -hmm. We actually were pretty lucky here in the Midwest, and depending on your definition of the Midwest, um, but Illinois, we, there's actually a handful in Illinois, obviously the Upper Peninsula, Michigan. Uh, if you're willing to go up to Minnesota, there's some good stuff in Minnesota as well. Uh, a little bit in Ohio, which I'll, I'll share in a little bit here. Um, you know, everyone thinks like, yeah, I got to go out to the Rockies. I got to go out to the East Coast. I got to go to Canada to do it. Absolutely not. Like this right here, this is um, Jackson Falls, I believe. What, no, this is this is Stark Rock. Stark wow. Rock, two hours southwest of Chicago. And the difference between Stark Rock and like the Upper Peninsula where we go um, mm -hmm. for picture, pictured rocks is there's just not as much. Mm. But you want to get into this. We lead groups out there. There's There's groups that... Uh, ice climb all winter out there. So do you need to like, you know, if joining like your guiding trips and stuff, like do you have to invest in some basic equipment before you join or is this stuff that's provided to you if you're to consider that? Well, the, the nice thing with the festivals is the festivals, you pay a little bit extra money and you have access to, to the gear. So all you need to bring is obviously your winter clothing, a helmet and a harness. They provide the mountaineering boots, they provide the crampons, they provide the ice tools for you. They're, they're no longer called axes, they're ice tools. They've mm -hmm. changed that in the last couple of years. Uh, but if you're going to go not during a festival or you're going to go to Starve Rock or anywhere else, um, you're going to have to rent the gear yourself. And, you know, if you could rent it and do your own trip because you feel comfortable setting anchors and whatnot, you're going to have to go ahead and rent that stuff or purchase it. Got it. Makes sense. So this one here, this is Jackson Falls, five and a half hours south of uh, Illinois. Wow. Du this is Duluth. You see how cool this is. And you notice, start noticing in the pictures, there's a little bit of a difference. Starve Rock has a bit of a Upper Peninsula vibe, just not as much. Yeah. Duluth, there is so much ice climbing in Duluth. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as thick, but you see how wide it gets. So if you want to make your way up to Duluth, which is seven hours north northwest of Chicago, so kind of like the drive up to the UP, well worth it if you want to ice climb. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like a much kind of wider um, yeah. experience being able to climb, you know, a whole wall yeah, instead of totally. just a fall. You get, you get more and more there. Uh, the, the last one was Ohio, which is a little bit smaller. This here, um, you start now getting into ice towers. So there's, there's an ice tower in Frankfurt, Illinois, which is uh, 45 minutes southwest of Chicago. There's an ice tower in Iowa. There's one in uh, Michigan. And so they're creating these towers or they take a silo. And the farmers, they literally, they run water down and let it freeze. And so you're basically climbing up a frozen silo yep. or, a fro or, fro or a frozen wall. So there, the people get creative with this stuff. So there's plenty of opportunity here in the seat. So there you go. There's a uh, Cedar, Cedar Falls, mm. Cedar Falls, Cedar Falls, Iowa, which five hours West. Awesome. How cool is that? Yeah. It's like a, it's almost like a rock wall, right? It's like a man-made thing. So um, that's really cool. And then you see this one here. This is um, Peabody. Uh, the town is called Fenton, Michigan, four hours east of Chicago. You start seeing some obstacle courses, right? You start seeing they try to mimic some mixed climbing and, and things like that. If you've ever seen any videos or pictures from uh, uh, Uri out in Colorado, mm -hmm. they have obstacle courses where some of the stuff is hanging and it moves and it challenges you. It's just people are starting to get really creative when it comes to ice climbing. Nice. That's awesome. Cool. So Michigan Ice Fest, I think, would you say it's the closest festival to Chicago yeah. to go to? Like, yeah. um, what 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 do you see there? Like, what are people um, heading up there for? Totally. So um, Michigan Ice Fest will actually make the drive in about six and a half hours, maybe seven hours, depending on weather. Um, it happens every February. I usually say like right around like Valentine's Day. Um, it's growing, which is really cool. But the people there, I mean, we all know the climbing community. If you're in a climbing community, it's very friendly, very open, right? A lot of people get intimidated walking into a climbing gym or things like that. You don't have to feel that way because 
everybody here is so friendly. So that's the first thing. You know, you, you hear the term Minnesota nice or Canadian nice. Upper Peninsula is just like the Minnesota and Canada. Everyone's super nice and friendly, very welcoming. Um, and I mentioned the gear, right? First part about going to a festival on Michigan Ice Fest is they provide you the gear. So up in the upper left-hand corner there, those are uh, Arcteric's uh, uh, Crux boots. Those are six, $700 boots. Mm -hmm. You get to wear them, right? I think it's like 45 bucks, 50 bucks for the gear rental per day or, or for the weekend, I'm sorry. And you get to wear six, $700 boots. You get to wear 300 $400 crampons. You get to use $500 tools, right? Yeah. So you get to use some of the best stuff out there Shout out to our parents. <laughs> you get to use some of the best stuff out there and just pay the the weekend fee. So that that's one really cool thing about going to the festivals and Michigan Ice Fest. Um, another cool part. So if you go there, go to the next slide. They've got all the clinics. So when we when I went for the first time, uh, I led a group. There maybe it was twelve of us. Never never ice climbed before. We were uh, rock climbers. And so we did the intro classes and they had the uh, professional guides out there teaching you all the basics, right? Here's what you need to learn. Here's what you need to do. Here's how you need to write, you know, uh, read the routes, et cetera, et cetera. And it got to the point to where like, wow, we had a blast. This was so much fun. And so now the clinics, once you get to past beginner phase, you could get ahead and work your way to intermediate and advanced because they've got all the different clinics out there for you. Yeah. Uh, I, myself, I just teach, basic beginning. I have zero ambition to become a pro ice climber. I have zero ambition to be the best ice climber in the world or in the state or in the city. My talent and my love, as I mentioned, is to bring it to other newbies, mm -hmm. right? So I could go ahead and train all day long and do everything else to get better and better. I'd rather sit back and watch everybody else experience and have a good time with them. Yeah. That's, that's why I just like going and watching and like having conversation with the people at the bottom of the, the big ice wall, tower, um, whatever you call it, is just like taking pictures. And I remember somebody at the ice fest just had like an actual hammock just hanging between trees and we were all like taking turns, like laying on it. And like, there's something truly beautiful about like hanging in a, in a hammock underneath an ice climber, like watching them. It's a pretty cool way to be outside. We may have crossed paths because I bring a hammock every year. So that might have been my hammock. That literally might have been you. <laughs> uh, and then um, they also have uh, a headquarters. They've got all the pro stuff. And so you, you get there, you get to you know purchase some new gear, try some new gear out, check things out. Uh, you always see me hanging out at the Arcteric Center, obviously. Um, but it's just really cool to surround yourself and engulf yourself into this community. You see people who are passionate about it. You see, you know, it, it's, it's really cool because you'll have, you know, the, that slide you just showed is Will Gad. You have like some of the best climbers in the world hanging out, you know, mm -hmm. just walking by like, hey, what's up? And so uh, this slide here, you know, talking about we have presentations and um, speakers coming out there. And Will Gad, Conrad Anchor, you have some of the legends, some of the best in the world coming there. And, you know, somebody, you know, Alex Honnold walks into your climbing gym and some people you're kind of like, oh, my gosh, you know, they blah, everything. Ice Fest, it's just like all these people yeah. all around. You know, because climbers, you know, there's 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 not a ton of this like, oh, I'm a pro, I'm a celebrity, and I'm, yeah. I'm more important, just normal people. Yeah. I, I, I tell a funny story to where uh, one of my newbies on the trip named Lee, Lee, if you're watching, I'm going to call you out here. Uh, <laughs> we get on the bus to go to the climbs, and he sits right next to Conrad Anchor. And if everybody should know who Conrad Anchor is, if you don't know who he is, he's one of the godfathers of climbing. He's one of the OGs, one of the best in the world. Sits next to him, has no idea who he is. Everybody else on the bus is like, oh my gosh, there's Conrad. There's Conrad. No way. <laughs> and so he asked Conrad a question and Conrad, a little bit of an awkward guy, he, his response was, oh, do you want an autograph? And Lee's like, why would I want an autograph? <laughs> Some random old guy, you know, it's, yeah. just, it's just really funny because you know, like I said, you go there and everybody is just equal. It's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. We, we saw him there too. I sh probably shouldn't say this, but he had like the most ratty, like used <laughs> jacket on. Remember like he literally that, yeah. just looked like um, <laughs> he had just been like climbing in the back country for months. Like, but it honestly, he had been doing it for years, probably in the same jacket, which I appreciated. But I was just yeah. like, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think this is a, I mean, maybe you would just because he's just wearing his gear out, like climbing, <laughs> doing crazy stuff. Totally. Um, I remember that. I think I have a picture of that in here. Also, one thing different about Michigan Ice Fest 
is they have um, the guy who puts it on his name is Bill Thompson. Shout out to you, Bill. He's one of the, one of the awesomest guys. Really cool. He has what they call the world's greatest raffle. And so you get a raffle ticket when you register, you, you go there and then they have two nights of this. And they also have a little side one here. Um, if you sign up for the um, American Alpine club and the chances of winning something are pretty high. And what you're going to win typically is pretty awesome stuff. It's not little things like, Oh yeah, I want a little, you know, Yeti. It's like you're winning like crampons or, you know, thousand dollar pair of mountaineering boots. And so that's another really cool part um, hmm. about Michigan Ice Festival. Cool. And then the community, we have an after party. It's a lot of fun. And I'll, you'll hear me say this throughout this entire conversation here is the best part about Michigan Ice Fest is the people mm-hmm. connecting with people. You know, yeah, the climbing's, climbing's great. The It's beautiful. Everything about it is gorgeous. You're right there on, on Lake Superior. But the people, the connections that you make, the relationships that you make. And so being able to climb all day, get tired, get exhausted, go back to headquarters, return your gear, hang out a little bit, and then go to the to the after party and just let loose and connect with others. It's like I said, I, I could live anywhere in the world and every year I will come back for this fest. It's mm-hmm. that much fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Definitely feel a sense of community there. And so all the next photos are just, it's, I put these on here because it's all about the people, right? The, the bonding that you're making, the relationships that you're making, you know, we, it, it's a long drive from Chicago. Even the drive from Chicago is a lot of fun because we're, we're connected with each other. We're singing songs and we're at the house and we're having a blast and having meals and sharing life together. It's just, that is by far the best part about, I mean, I think, you know, anybody who's on this, on this, uh, watching this, if they're climbers, if they're outdoorsmen or women, excuse me, <laughs> but if you're outdoors people or surfers, anything like that, it's, it's the connections that you're making with others. Mm-hmm. So there's just a bunch of photos of just, there's Conrad, there's that, there's that jacket you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. He had, he had a big puffy yellow one on. <laughs> okay. This was right after a climb. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's just, I mean, you see everybody smile. You, you, you don't see any photos of anybody not smiling because it's, like I said, it's just, it's just funny. Like this was, we did a partner climb. So we, each one of us had one tool in our hand and we're holding hands the whole time while we're climbing. Mm. And so we started doing goofy stuff. And it, That's it's awesome. Look at all the smiles, you know? <laughs> I do have a question. Tech, the, the, and maybe this is a good picture to stop on for it. Like these giant shards of ice, like that are just on the ground. Like that's kind of terrifying to me um, <laughs> as someone who is standing below or like concerned about, you know, a foot going into the ice and it falling off. Like what are some of the safety things you have to think about while you're up on the ice wall? Good question. Um, first off, make sure you're, everyone's wearing a helmet. If you're anywhere near in the fall zone, you're wearing a helmet. That that's first and foremost. There is no exception to that. There, you know, when you're when we do rock climbing, you know, hey, if you're experienced, there's not free rock. You know, I was just out climbing in Romney, didn't wear a helmet. You know, mm-hmm. but here, hundred percent, you are not allowed to be there if you don't have a helmet on. First off, mm-hmm. uh, second of off, you're going to be as, as you're picking. And, and also, I wanted to share like. When you are climbing, you are not hammering like crazy. You're not trying. It's not, you know, it's sometimes just the lightest little stick just to get that friction. Um, but there's going to be ice falling down. So, you know, you yell ice or mm-hmm. our group, because uh, when we first started this, there was a group from Colombia and you kept hearing hielo, <laughs> I, I, ice in Spanish. And so yeah. our, our group now yells hielo. <laughs> and so you're always like alerting people, hey, if you're picking, there's ice falling down, things like that. Um, we rarely see large chunks falling down, but everybody's paying attention, right? Mm-hmm. And if you're not paying attention, you're far, you're off to the side to where you're out, off, outside the impact zone. Mm-hmm. Um, you also were teaching you not to kick like crazy, not to pick like crazy, um, but it all depends. There was one year we went and it was 55 degrees outside. Right. We're climbing in T-shirts and ice is melting. About 60 percent of the climbs were out because they were already melting. So mm-hmm. we were able to get on some of the bigger ones that were still there. And I remember I'm up there and I'm trying to find a spot and I got a little mix. And I got my foot up on the wall and I hit it super light and boom, this big piece comes down. 
right? And so when you're blaying first off, you're kind of blaying off to the side because you know, hey, there's some stuff falling from down mm-hmm. here. But it's it's communication. Mm-hmm. It's awareness. You, you can't take this lightly because you see – Vince down there with that big piece there, imagine that coming down, that that could crush somebody. And so it's all just being aware and being safe. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, cool. And like kind of rounding out the kind of safety, but just in general of like, how do you, you know, you've maybe tried it or you're interested in getting in it. Um, what do you need to know about kind of really making the plunge and also just getting better at the sport? Hmm. So first off, I have this one, buy, buy, excuse me, buy versus rent. Don't, I'm a gear person. I love gear. All right. And uh, being, for example, being a surfer, everybody asked me here in Chicago, do I kite surf? Mm. And I said, no, I haven't tried it yet. Because with kite surfing, you know, it is hard to find somebody that's going to give you lessons to rent this stuff out. You know, there's a few places here and there, but it's not a ton out there. So if I want to get into kite surfing, I have to invest $1,500 to $2,000 just to try it. And let's say I try it and I don't like it. Then I just wasted all my money on that. Same thing with ice climbing. That's why I say go to a festival. That's why I say go ahead and run stuff. Like figure out, is this something you want to do? Because it's expensive. Pair of pair mountaineering boots, $400 minimum, $1,100 on, on a high end. Uh, crampons, you're looking at $250 to $500, $600. Um, your tools, you're looking at $250 to $400 each. When you if you ever buy tools, make sure you realize that price is only for one, not for two. Mm. Uh, even ice screws, if you're going to do any lead climbing, which is a little more challenging and dangerous, an ice screw will be forty five bucks on the minimum per wow. screw. Wow! You know, so it's an, it's it's not the most expensive sport, but it is an investment. And so, if you're going to go ahead and get into it, try it out first before you start buying stuff. So that's first and foremost. Um, next piece, get lessons for someone. This is a, a few of my buddies were up there and we're, you know, we wanted a good photo op, but we're also up there teaching each other, guiding each other. I'm showing them like, Hey, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. Maybe you should use your legs a little bit more because with ice climbing, everyone thinks like, Oh, I don't have a strong upper body. It's actually a lot more of a uh, lower body. All right. So teaching people like, Hey, step, step, pick, pick and, and being able to share it. So find someone that has done it before and can teach you. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get better at ice climbing, don't just go out there and do it by yourself. Find somebody who can help you with it. If you do decide to do it, climb, climb, and climb during, the, during, during on season. Mm-hmm. Get out there and do it as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, you know, it's, we all know this is the only way you're going to get better in something is practice. And so during the on season where it's there, get out there as much as possible, which you mentioned, I, you know, Illinois, Iowa, all these different places, there's plenty of opportunity to do it. Yeah, I, I have a question about just like fitness, because I know you're, I think, or I think I know you're a fitness instructor too, um, or a coach in, in that regard. What ki- what types of like strength do you need to have? Like more leg muscle for ice climbing, mm-hmm. like arm muscle, like what, what do you really feel getting worked out when you're up on the wall? Totally. Uh, I have a slide about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, um, before we get there, off season, you do have some tools that you could use. You have these dry ice tools. And so if you look on the right, if you can kind of see in there, you're using regular indoor holes. Oh, yeah. And then you're just, you're practicing that. So there are ways to mimic indoor climbing. Hmm. But to answer your question, if you go to, to um, the next two slides, climbing doesn't directly translate, but it, it translates a lot, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's not one-to-one comparison. There are some differences for sure, but mo- a lot of the muscles that you're going to use in ice climbing, you're using in rock climbing. So if you do want to get better, yeah, get into the climbing gym, do some traversing, you know, start working on, on, on anything you're doing. And if you want to progress truly in ice climbing, learn how to lead climb, get up there, start doing that. Next piece here, grip strength. You know, it is a lot more legs, I mean, climbing in general should be a lot of legs, but ice climbing is a lot more legs, but you do pump out, mm-hmm. right? Because you're here and you're hanging and, and you know, the nice thing is you could go, if, if you're top rope, you know, you could stick your, your, your tools in there and kind of release and shake out, you know, just like you do when you, when you top rope, you know, uh, regular climbing, rock climbing. Um, but holding that, it's a different hold, right? Uh, on, on rock climbing, you may have, you know, you have some jug, you have all these different things. 
you're always holding these picks. And so you're kind of in the same position. And so, you know, making sure you have wrist mobility, making sure you have extensor strength, making sure you also, from my background, I specialize in pre and post injury, making sure you train the opposite motion, hmm. right? A lot of people think, oh, grip strength. I just got to train, train, you know, grip strength, train the opposite, get those uh, finger, hmm. the rubber fingers and spread out. That's going to help prevent injury. Anybody on this call who, who's had finger injuries or hand injuries, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, once you decide that you're in, oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Core strength, obviously, we all know that, you know, but building up your leg, building up your endurance, you know, um, yeah, you could do your traditional deadlifts and squats and everything else. But anybody who's trained for climbing or trained for ice climbing, you know, endurance, right? So instead of, Instead of doing, uh, let's say, let's say deadlift, you want to build your leg strength. Instead of deadlift doing five sets of three reps, heavy weight, I may go ahead and do 10 sets of 10 reps or 10 sets of 15 reps at a lighter weight to build up the endurance on it. Because if you've ever experienced burnout when you're climbing, it sucks, right? Because mm -hmm. you're trying to shake it out and it burns and, you know, and then you end up locking up, you can't do it. And so anything that you're doing, whether it's upper body or lower body, get that endurance piece going as well. And then once you're into it, then start investing in good gear, right? Invest in, you know, there's, there's entry level things for sure. Like there, there's some uh, ice tools that are 160, 185 bucks and they're very, very basic. But once you're into it, then start progressing, get yourself a really good pair of crampons, a really good mm -hmm. roll to ice screws and everything else. Like, um, it makes all the difference. And, you know, uh, Ashley asked, what's your favorite, like, winter memory? And I actually mm -hmm. shared this as an Arcteryx ambassador. Uh, one of my buddies, he still has a lot of old school gear, old school clothing. All right. I've got all the new stuff I've got. You know, Arcteryx hooks me up with all the, the great stuff. And so I am perfectly warm, but I look like stream. I look like I'm barely wearing a lot of a lot of stuff mm -hmm. he does the old school stuff and he looks like the kid from christmas story he looks like he can barely move and everything else because he hasn't upgraded to that right and yes he also carries a lot in his gear but like you you can tell the difference yeah of like of the good gear updated gear versus the old school stuff and so like, like i said if you're gonna get into it invest in the good stuff and then you know lesson my dad always taught me take care of your tools tools take care of you same thing with your gear that's awesome that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> cool. Um, you brought up, uh, you, you mentioned something I just wanted to remind everyone. We're doing a raffle actually for a piece of Arcteryx gear. You could probably climb in it, I'm imagining, um, for today. So if you haven't commented your favorite winter activity yet, do that at mappyhour.org. Um, and we're announcing a winner at the end if you stick around for that. Very cool. And then if you really want to get into it, YouTube, start following some of the best. You have Will Gad here. You got Conrad Anchor. Um, and you don't even need to go with the top, right? Will Gad and Conrad Anchor, some of the best there. My buddy, my buddy uh, Ari here, like he's, I can't remember if he's local. He, he's here a lot, but he's not um, a legend, but he's, a, he's one of the best out there. He's got some really good stuff and he's extremely reachable. I, I would bet that you could go on Facebook, find him and reach out and stuff like that. He's such a nice guy to where he'd be like, yeah, sure. Hey, you're running to me? Sure, I'll climb with you, right? Again, super welcoming community. You don't need to just follow the legends. Follow anybody that's doing it and you can learn a lot from them. Cool. Um, great. I, I did want to ask a couple of quick questions just about... Um, you know, what, what exactly do you do on a guided trip? Like, are you climbing all day? Like, are you learning the basics? Like if I'm just starting out, like what can I expect from a guided trip? Mm, good question. Um, first off on, on the trips and I'm going to go right from the start, uh, provide transportation, provide lodging, provide all the meals. I end up, I love to cook. I love the hosts, right? So I end up cooking the meals and, you know, I have some people, you know, I ask for some help things there, but it, it is like an all-inclusive trip minus alcohol, right? So like provide everything there. Uh, I recommend the clothing and the gear and everything else and make sure you're set up for success. We go ahead, we get to the festival, we get the, the gear that they provide. We go out to the climbs. And then if you're a newbie, I'm teaching you basic skills, 
teaching you. I, we got we got our crew that set up the anchors, and I'm teaching. We're doing top rope. Here's basic stuff, and I get them going. Now, because we're getting into you know, five and six years of doing this, you get people who've been at every trip with me. Now we want to progress, and so we may have another route here where we got all the ice crews, and we're starting to lead climb and do some more advanced things. So this trip, we're going to have kind of you know on the same climb. You see some of the pictures, you got these massive frozen waterfalls. And so um, if you're a newbie, I'm going to set you up. And we will get to the climbs probably like 10, 10 in the morning, 10, 15 in the morning. And we'll climb till about four, which might not seem like a long time, but that's plenty. Mm -hmm. Right? And you have plenty of times so you'd be able to, to get up there and climb and you'd hang out and we mingle as you've experienced, you know, we're, we're, we've got music playing sometimes, we got a tarp, we're there, we bring our food and coffee and whatnot, we get to kind of mingle with others and walk around when you're not climbing. Uh, and then on the more intermediate side, it's like, all right, hey, let's start teaching you how to put the ice cruiser, let's start teaching you, you know, how to lead climb with ice, how to be safe with it, because I, I purposely didn't share a video, but there's videos out there that freak people out of, you know, you're on this big piece of ice and you hit it and this 50 foot slab of ice comes falling down. Yeah. Well, you've got the anchor set up on the rocks so that way you swing out to stay, stay safe. Hmm. Uh, I, I was going to show it to kind of tease people, but <laughs> I'm like, ah, that, that's going to scare people away, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, and so that's uh, we get there Thursday around dinner time. We cook dinner, we hang out, we mingle, get up early Friday. We go, and I have my crew that go set up an anchors early. Like, you know, we'll get up at like 6 a.m., go there, set it up because there's a lot more people coming to Ice Fest. And so we find our, our routes, we set it up, we, we, you know, put our stake in it. This is our climb. Yeah. Everybody, everybody goes to headquarters and start mingling and register. Um, Friday evening after we're done climbing, we usually go back to the house. We cook dinner, we drink beer, and we play board games, and we sing and karaoke. We just have a blast. Saturday, uh, same thing in the morning. We go there, we set up our clients, we go to headquarters. Um, but I think what I share with you is I'm known as a chili guy in Michigan Ice Fest. <laughs> yeah. So I I uh, pre make chili, and then I have like crock pots at headquarters. All day, people smell the the chili cooking. I always make sure I hook up the uh, uh, volunteers as well. So we climb, we go back to headquarters, we eat chili, and then we actually stay there all night because we go to the auditorium. They got the raffle, and they've got speakers and presenters, um, and then we have the after party. Sunday, we wake up, we have breakfast, we clean up, and we head back to Chicago. Cool. That sounds like a busy, tiring, but also really fun weekend. Oh, yeah. um, Super important question. What is your, do you have a, a special s s chili recipe? Did we get a sneak peek of what's in your chili recipe? Um, the secret ingredients there. I can't say everything. Oh, yeah. there's, 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 a, there's a secret ingredient to make any chili better. Uh, every ch any ch chili better. Um, it's a bag called six gun chili. Oh yeah. I've seen that. Yep. That. <laughs> That stuff is so good. And so I had my, I had my own spices and everything else to it, but I always have that as a base. And I've won, we were at the uh, Kraken Classic a couple years ago, and uh, I won best chili because everybody, you know, nice. chili kick off. So like that, that stuff is, is gold. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. definitely seen that on the shelf before um, at the store. So now I'm definitely sold. Get it. But, but beware the spicy packet. If you put the whole thing in, you better like spicy. Okay, good. Good to know. I need that. I need that. Um, because yeah, me and spice, sometimes it's not so great. Um, cool. So let's kind of round this out. I do have a few more questions for you to, to end with a little rap, fun rapid fire Q&A. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can also announce the winner of our raffle for today. Um, but anything kind of end with the with the all the advice you've given? It is one of the most exhilarating things that you could do, right? Um, when I'm climbing, if, if you know anything about the flow state, get into that flow state when I'm on the ice. Um, it's funny because I'm a summer guy. I'm a surfer. I love being in the water. But being able to be out there in the cold, it's, it's if you ever heard of the phrase type two fun, mm. it, it definitely can be type two fun. Uh, if you don't know what type two fun is Google it, but I'll kind of, you know, give you a quick example. Type two fun is the fun where 
sometimes while you're doing it, it seems miserable. Like, why the hell am I doing this? But then afterwards, you're like, that was the most amazing day. Mm. Right. So, so I mentioned that one time we were climbing it was 55 degrees out. Uh, my buddy Kirk on his first trip on day one on Friday, it was two degrees outside, maybe 50, 60 mile per hour wind gust. It was miserable. The snow, fresh powder, a good three, four feet to where you, if you, you stepped off the path just a little bit, you're going all the way down to your hip. Mm. It sucked. And that was his first day and of his first trip. And it was miserable. Now we had fun climbing and everything else. That night, he says, hey, I think I'm going to stay back. I don't think I'm going to do this tomorrow. And I'm like, no, no, man, trust me. That's not how it always is. That's an exception. Just like 55 degrees was an exception. That's an exception. Mm -hmm. So I convinced him to go. The next day, it was, you know, like 30 degrees, no no wind, everything else. And he had the best time. And he does not miss a trip. He's gone every, every year since. Nice. Right. But again, mm-hmm. that day, that's like that tight two fun to where like, oh, my gosh, this is so cold or windy and this sucks and everything else. Yep. But the bonds that you're forming, the relationship, the fun, everything else, when you go through this shit with others, it, it's it's so impactful. And so um, it's not always type two fun. Right. It type one fun. Sometimes it's just like, oh, that was an easy, easy way to get there and everything else. Good. But like. If you know what I'm talking about, you're, mm-hmm. you're probably nodding your head like, oh, yeah, I can think of some other experiences. <laughs> when I'm some fun. Yes. Like the time we winter hut hiked our uh, back, backpacked in the dead of winter in Wisconsin, which is a whole nother story of just like you make it through it and you look back on the adventure and you're like, oh, wow. Like I am so proud of myself for getting through <laughs> that. And I kind of want to do it again, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, I have a quick rapid fire Q and A for you, and then we'll kind of sign off and, and share how people can stay in touch and also announce our winner. So quick Q and A rapid fire, cause I love doing this with people. Um, one answer or a short answer to these questions, David. Okay. okay. West coast, East coast or fresh coast in the Midwest? For ice climbing? For whatever you like to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's for anything, West coast. West Coast. All right. Favorite peak to climb, ice or land? Oh, there's there's a lot. Or a park. Park. But I, I I have to say, pictured rocks. All Picture of it. Rocks. It's cool. just because just great experiences. Maybe not the most the best climb in the world, but just the experiences that I have up there. Cool. Which is where Wait. which Michigan Ice Fest is, by the way. Yep. You know, saying um, favorite Chicago spot to adventure. The lake, lake surfing, lake surfing, winter or summer, summer, beach or says, mountains? Says, says the ice climber, by the way, but summer. <laughs> <laughs> beach or mountains. Just a little bit more than the other beach. Got it. Just because last... of surfing and diving. <laughs> last question. Um, where are you going next? What's your next adventure? Uh, next week I leave for Florida for a surf trip. And then the following week is Michigan Ice Fest. Um, I believe we're going to Hawaii after that. And I'll be doing some surfing out there. Dang. So beach, ice, beach. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> got to mix it up. Cool. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. It looks like people can stay in touch with you via email, which we have here. I know you're on social media, on Instagram. Um, It was such a fun time talking to you today. Uh, Thanks for being our our Mappy Hour guest today in Chicago. And thanks to our sponsors here in Nevada. You see us drinking it. Um, (laughs) Honestly, this is my favorite hazy. Um, But if you ever find yourself in North Carolina, in Asheville, North Carolina, get over to Sierra Nevada Brewery. It's mm-hmm. what I call my Disneyland. Right? Everyone, <laughs> everyone likes, you know, Disney and everything else. Like we'll go there all day. It is not just huge, a huge brewery, but like they have this backyard and their fire pits and a, and a concert stage and the gardens and everything else. So like if you find yourself anywhere near Sierra Nevada Brewery in Asheville, North Carolina, do not miss it. Cool. Not have not been there personally. So that now it's another bucket list item for me. There you go. Cool. Well, um, thanks so much, David. I'm going to pop you out. We're going to announce the winner of our uh, event today. So see you around, David. 
Um, cool. So thanks for everyone. We had a lot of really awesome um, you know, submissions about what your favorite winter activity is, um, taking my granddaughter snowshoeing when she was young, um, you know, going out on a sunset ski tour in Colorado from Ryan, um, hanging out with Alex Lowe and Conrad after climbing Half Dome. That sounds amazing. Um, Mike said cross country skiing, which I know we can do a lot of here in, in the Midwest and in Chicago specifically, um, believe it or not. Um, but today we had uh, picked a winner at random and today it is Steven Wilkinson, if you're watching. Um, so thanks so much, Steven, for participating and thanks for everyone to participate. Um, we'll reach out to you over mathyhour.org. Um, and it's been really fun hanging out with David today and all of you. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we should be announcing some more Chicago and Arcteryx collaborations coming up in the future um, for events, both in store and, and virtual if we have to. Um, but we hope to see you soon. And thanks so much. Uh, stay connected with us on Instagram, uh, mappyhour.org, and we'll see you around.